Hey all, this is Justin with Alternative Drummer, and this is Drum Vlog episode number 25. Alright, so just kind of picking up right from the last episode about selling the Titan 50, which is sitting over there. And uh, tomorrow, a guy is supposed to be coming here to check it out, and, I, well, I think he's just going to buy it. He already gave me a deposit. My student, who was also interested in it, uh, ended up they couldn't take it. They didn't have enough space. So, uh, no worries, though. I was able to find a buyer pretty quickly. I sold it for really cheap. Um, I was just trying to get it out of here and give a good deal, you know, since I didn't pay anything for it. Uh, but, you know, uh, I'll miss it, but I'm really excited for the new project ahead. Um, I have all the parts that I need now. So basically, once I get rid of this thing tomorrow, um, basically right after that, I'm just going to go to the storage unit, pick up my pearls, and come back here and start moving stuff around and putting it together. And I'll be documenting that whole thing. So really looking forward to it. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. I'm super stoked. I've been, it's so funny. Like I've already been like rewatching a bunch of XD3 videos on YouTube, like over and over again, because I'm a weirdo to have nothing else to do. Um, but you know, even though I already have the module and I've already played it, but I'm like, oh, I want to re remember, remind myself like what it sounds like. And it still sounds really good to me. So, uh, I don't, and I also created like a new kit already on the AT ATV website and downloaded it. And I'm going to install that on there too. And then that, it dawned on me, I should be sharing my kits uh, for the XD3. So I, I'll make a video, a separate video about that because I have created several custom kits for it and I have them all, you know, saved on my computer. And that's a gr one of the great things about this module is that it's super easy to share the, the custom kits. Uh, you basically just put them on an SD card, you just download them, put them on an SD card and then install them on the module. And it's super easy. It's like seriously like one button. I guess that's all for right now. All right, sold the Titan. Uh, very nice guy from Long Island. Andrew came and picked it up and uh, moved the 2000 already over there to where the Titan was. And now I've got some space here for my Pearl. I, I have a bunch of stuff I need to take over to the storage unit. <laughs> and then I'm gonna grab the Pearl and bring it over here. And also I switched out my bass drum pad on my SD2000 with the KP2 uh, because this thing just feels better. I mean, the, the one that came on the SD2000 works just fine, but it's a bit bouncy and, you know, kind of flops around a little bit. All right, there's the pearls. Also got my disco lights, which I brought here for some reason. I don't know why. I took it from the house because that's where I use them. It's amazing that this thing is considered compact by some people. <laughs> now, in case you were wondering about my drum bags, uh, these are by Barton Drums. And if you're not familiar with Barton Drums, they make some really, really cool, not only drum cases, but actual drums too. Uh, all their drums look very vintage. In fact, they look quite a bit like this drum kit that I have in here. All right, there they are, all out of the cases. So now I've actually got to do the actual conversion part, which is remove the batter heads, and well, remove all the heads, uh, the mylar heads, that was the word I was looking for. Remove the mylar heads and then uh, put on all the mesh, well, first install the triggers and then put on all the mesh heads. Also, I think I'm gonna switch back to the original vintage uh, pearl white head for the front uh, just to give it a more overall vintage look. I like the black head on there but with all the black batter heads it looks really cool but I think once I have all the white you know batter heads mesh heads on there it'll look a little weird so I'm gonna switch it back and plus this just looks so cool. All right I got the batter head off of the bass drum and I just want to show you guys the inside of these shells. Luan Mahogany. Uh, they're pretty good shape. They look a little chewed up there, but it's actually just the inside that's like that. Like on the actual edge that touches the head is uh, pretty good. But of course, this isn't going to matter in an electronic situation. So I'm thinking I'm going to install the... Well, <laughs> let me look at it first. But my first thought, though, is I'll probably put the trigger like right there. Uh, kind of like, uh, let's see, 5 till 12, you know, on the, the top. Uh, because every time, you know, at least when I've used external triggers, when, you know, you have a double bass drum pedal, one beater kind of hits towards the center and the other one's a little bit off. So it's almost good to have it almost in the middle of those two beaters to get even triggering, I think. Uh, or maybe it's just totally in my head. But I haven't had, you know, much luck from triggering from the bottom, though. I do know that a lot of manufacturers tell you to do that. But to me, I always seem to get a very weak signal down there. So... Anyway, I'm gonna put it on the top. Okay, so it looks like there's a QR code there, how to install. So let's try that. Okay, I installed the bass drum trigger and that was insanely simple. Uh, very nice design here by Drum Tech. All you have to do is just loosen two of the screws on one of the lugs, then it has this sliding bracket that fits right on there. And then basically what you wanna do 
is try to get the trigger to stick up above the rim one eighth of an inch. And I didn't measure it, but I just eyed it. And I think I got it pretty close. One thing, the little lead, like basically the way this works is you have this little cable that plugs into the trigger and that comes out the other side and has a full size quarter inch uh, jack on it. And they also give you a little clip uh, to attach it to one of the lugs. I'm gonna do that after I finish the rest. But um, what I was gonna say is this thing <laughs> barely fit through my vent hole, like barely. Uh, but you know, this is a very old drum set. New, new drum sets, I don't think you would have a problem, but it still fit through. Okay, we're getting there. I got all the tom, well, the two toms done, and the bass drum. Now I just need to do the snare, which is gonna be a little different because that one is using the center-mounted uh, groove bar uh, trigger. So, I'll show you that here in a second. Alrighty, I've got the groove bar installed, and uh, it's, you know, it's a center-mounted trigger, so it's a little harder to install than the regular groove dot. The groove dots are really easy. Uh, this one you have to put together, like basically uh, these end L-rod pieces, uh, they're not attached to the single bar. And in fact, the instructions on the website, unless I was looking in the wrong spot, are not great. But there were some photos on there where I was able to see, you know, that there's like this, this thing that kind of lifts this bar up from the L-bracket. You can't really see it too well since I already put it on there, but it's under there. <laughs> um, also, it came with a couple extra pieces here. Um, these are like extenders. I guess if you are doing a longer, you know, or a bigger drum, then you could use these to extend it out longer. Uh, but it fit with just those uh, three pieces in my 14 inch snare drum. So now I need to put the batter head on here and then set all the stands up and cymbals and the module and everything and see if it works. I probably should have tested the individual drums as I was putting it together, but nah, I didn't feel like it. Living on the edge. Anyway, here we go. All right, here it is, all completed. And uh, let me just walk you through real quick how I rounded out the kit. Okay, so the VH11 hi-hats, these I do want to replace. Uh, I'm not crazy about VH11s. They work good, but they're so heavy. Uh, they're very noisy, and especially for the hi-hat, you know, it's like a really heavy sound that keeps hitting the floor. So I want to replace those. I think I'm going to get the ATVs. But like I said in the last video, I need to wait a little while before I spend that money. Up here, I've got a Roland uh, CY13R that I'm using for my Crash 1. 16 inch or 15 inch lemon ride cymbal, uh, three zone. And actually, I just ordered an 18 inch one of those. So I'm gonna take that and move it over here once the 18 inch comes. This is a 13 inch lemon. So all of the triggers worked really, really well. Uh, no problems at all. Everything's triggering perfectly. The snare drum is really good, like really, really good. It's crazy. I think it's probably the nicest triggering electronic snare drum I played, which is pretty crazy considering it's uh, an acoustic drum. But even compared to my uh, Roland PD100, I think that's what it is, uh, this thing still triggers better than that. Uh, so I did, I did have to make a couple adjustments in the module, but not that many. Uh, you know, I just went through the different trigger types. The cymbals all were fine because those I used before. Pad types, adjusted some sensitivity, uh, and that's all. So I know you guys want to see some playing, so I'll, I'll go ahead and play a little bit. It's getting kind of late here, so I'm going to have to stop here pretty soon. But I should be able to record a little bit.
finished, I think it came out really, really good. Uh, I love the triggers. Uh, I'm having to readjust to playing a full-sized kit again because I've been playing like little e-drums for so long. Having like a 14-inch snare in front of me is, you know, a little bit strange, but still, uh, I think it looks really cool. It sounds really cool. Uh, the great thing about the ATV is I can use it like mostly for acoustic sounds. And uh, in the next couple of days, or probably tomorrow or something, there's going to be a song uh, that I'm going to post where I recorded with these. And uh, I'm also going to do some tutorials. Now there's actually some hidden features in the ATV XT3 module that I want to show you guys. Well, one hidden feature, but I want to experiment with that a little bit. And uh, I'll be posting that here pretty soon on the channel. So thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell icon. And also follow my project, Manasota on Spotify. There's a link down below. Now I know I always ask you guys to follow various projects, but this is another one of my projects that I work on and uh, I'm releasing some new material under that name here pretty soon. So follow that down below and I will see you all really soon. Have a great day.